Camping on an organised site gives you access to all the services and facilities that we take for granted at home, such as water, electricity and shops. But if you decide to strike out and camp in the wild, you're on your own. A wild night out starts with the necessary experience to look after yourself whilst away from civilization. Many people make the transition from an organised to a wild campsite by heading out for one night to a place it is reasonably easy to retreat from if an unexpected difficulty arises. Next comes the contents of your rucksack. You need to strike a balance between having all the essential gear and not carrying so much that the weight and bulk becomes unmanageable. Depending on where you are in the UK and in the world, different laws exist about where you can camp. Always check what the rules are in the area you are visiting before you set out. When it comes to choosing a place to camp, there are different factors to consider depending on where you are. If you're camping in a forest, look up to see if there's any indication that a branch or trunk might come down in the night, especially in high winds. In mountainous areas, avoid places that are prone to rockfall or avalanche. And if you're camping on a beach, inside a canyon or in a steep-sided valley, be aware of high tides and the risk of flash floods. Some people like the idea of camping near a river as it's easy to collect water for drinking and cooking. But the problem with camping near a large body of moving water is that it can be really noisy, especially at night when everything else is silent. And water attracts biting insects at dawn and dusk and they can be really irritating. When it comes to the terrain you're going to camp on, it's common sense to avoid lumpy ground. But you also want to steer clear of completely level ground, as it can become waterlogged during a storm. In popular places, camp where others have pitched their tents. But in pristine areas, avoid locations where environmental impacts are starting to appear. Whenever possible, try to camp on terrain that is free of fragile flora, such as wildflowers. Well, this looks like a great spot. The ground's slightly sloping, so any rainwater is going to be able to run away. And it's pretty smooth. I'll just clear away these twigs. Items like my head torch, loo paper and first aid kit go in the tent but I try to keep my non-essential kit in the rucksack so that the living and sleeping areas remain reasonably clear. It's amazing how much heat you lose through the ground, so always use a closed cell foam mat or an inflatable mattress like this one. Regardless of whether your sleeping bag is filled with synthetic or natural down insulation, always get it out as early as possible, so it has plenty of time to loft. If you want to further reduce the weight of your rucksack, one option is to swap a tent for a bivy bag made from a waterproof breathable fabric. Some people also put their sleeping mat inside the bivy bag so they don't roll off the mat and onto the ground in the middle of the night. Specialist dried food is lightweight and only requires boiling water to be added. Or you could go gourmet with a variety of dried foods from supermarkets and speciality stores. I find that adding rehydrated fruit and vegetables is a lightweight and easy way to add flavour and nutrients to any outdoor meal. And of course the plastic bag that I brought all my food in becomes the rubbish bag for any packaging as well as litter that I either generate or find during the course of my trip. Evenings can be cool or even cold, especially in the autumn, winter and spring, so consider carrying an additional fleece jacket or lightweight duvet. And a compact, battery-powered lantern helps to turn reading, cooking and eating into pleasant experiences. Cotswold sells all the kits you need for a wild night out, and many of the staff are experienced campers. Pop in for some advice and equipment.